Hi, when someone says the word perspective to you, does your heart sink just a little? And do you avoid drawing buildings because they always look a little bit wrong? Well, perspective is all about how we represent our 3D world on a 2D bit of paper or canvas. And once you understand it, it's really logical and really shouldn't worry you. So I'm going to explain about your eye level line and vanishing points and explain one, two and three point perspective to help you in your work. And of course, once you understand perspective, you're allowed to ignore it totally or distort it and you can really make perspective something quite unique in your pictures. My name's Liz Chatterton. I'm a professional watercolour artist based in Berkshire and every week I do a tip, trick or technique that I wish someone had told me when I started painting. And this week I thought I would explain perspective and how to use it. How do we create height and width and depth on a piece of paper that only has height and width? And there are probably three sorts of perspective you're going to come across, but they all build on each other and they're all really simple. So once you get head, your head round it, you, you're good to go. And it's one point perspective, two point perspective and three point perspective. Before we start, there are basically a couple of concepts that are really worth knowing. And one is about the eye level line that some people call the horizon. The other is about the vanishing point. Gosh, what dreadful writing. Anyway, <laughs> so the eye level line is what I like to call it. And that's the line that you put across your paper or canvas that represents where, you, where your eye level is. And some people call it the horizon, but I think that confuses you because say your picture was of some hills, you might think the horizon is where land meets the sky, but actually you need to have, think of your horizon as where your eye level is. So just call it your eye level line and um, that's less confusing. And I've done a little film of me walking up and down the path to, to my studio, which shows that if you have your camera at, at your eye level, your eyes stay the same level, whether you're further or closer to, to it. And that's quite helpful to look at. The second concept you need to understand is about your, your vanishing point. So if you have parallel lines, your vanishing point is the point where they appear to meet. Now we know they're parallel, so actually they run side by side and they never meet, but they appear to meet in the distance. And that is your vanishing point. Hi, this is Future Liz coming back just to make something clear that I don't think I made clear enough. The vanishing point is always going to be on your eye level line. If you've got those two terms in your head, you're not going to go far wrong. So let's look at single point perspective. And I found this lovely photo which shows it beautifully. Don't you just wish you were here? So we have our eye level line, it is fairly obvious and lovely and straight across that sea. And these lines are parallel, these lines are parallel, and where they meet is the vanishing point. This sort of perspective is super for anything where you're seeing things pretty much square on. And if we drew, I don't know, say a cube let's draw a box so a boat has obviously come into this boardwalk and it's left a package here there we 
we go. We can draw it in perspective by doing the lines to that vanishing point from the corners. All the, the perpendicular lines will just be straight up, straight down. The ones across will be straight up, straight across. But there, that would be our box in perspective that's been delivered. Now, if the boat had delivered the same size box, but had dropped it at the end, maybe the tide was out, we can draw the same size box by just Oops, I couldn't see where my line was. Continuing those lines there. And the same size box further away is, is and that's how it would look like. And if I did a, a really little box, we could kind of do it further away there. So that is one point perspective and we use, you often see it with, oh I don't know, railway tracks. Let's make that into a railway track. You see lines of trees. You've got, you know, a tree here and then the tops of the trunks and the tops of the trees obey those those same laws you sometimes see people do it with telephone wires so you know telegraph wire here or one there for example and it all funnels in and it leads you in there sometimes you're not looking at things straight on you're looking at corners so two point perspective comes into play and I found this lovely picture of somewhere in America I don't know where and very handily it's got a little chap here who sh so that shows me where my eye level line is let's let's just pop it in because of course in a built-up area you can't see the horizon it's it's hidden by all the buildings now, this corner of the building, because it's straight onto us, appears as, an, as a normal rectangle. But we have two vanishing points where the parallel lines of the building end up. And one is about here. Yeah, it's about there. And the other is, we can just run that down to about here by the looks of things. I mean sometimes it's going to be slightly distorted by the camera angles but can you see that this building here also comes to a vanishing point that's on the the, the crossing Belisha beacon and this one is a bit hard to see because we've got the signage in the way but this one all comes to there. So we have two vanishing points and it's called two point perspective. Just to show you if you're looking at the, the angle of say a cube. So before we had the cube straight onto us but we're looking at the, the side. Here's our eye level line. It's just choose where we want our vanishing points to be. We could put that there. We could put that there. We can put that there. And there. Join those up. And this building, cube, house, whatever it is, is now in perspective and those would carry on to here. If we had any windows, 
they would also be in perspective. Let's just do a big window there. Or, or if we had a door, that would go like that. And we would just join that up. Everything follows those rules. That's three point perspective. So we use that for things where we've got two sets of parallel lines going away. We can see both faces of something. So anything that features lots of corners, two point perspective comes into play. We have three point perspective. And I picked out this picture of, I'm guessing it's New York. So again, handily, I have some people in here. It, they're slightly distorted, but I can get my horizon stroke eye level line roughly marked in because I can see some people there. I have, as before, my vanishing points. It's always on that eye level line. So one vanishing point is there. And if I follow, say, that line, it's almost, mm, that actually, I think it's off the edge of the paper. It's sort of over here. Yeah, so the vanishing point is over here. The vanishing point absolutely can be outside of the, the picture. But I have another vanishing point because look at how those buildings go up. Let's find where that next vanishing point, and that's off the top of the camera. So I'm going to move it down for you just so we can actually, I can show you that it exists. So it's somewhere up here, right off the edge. I would say... Let's just do that. Yeah, it's somewhere about there is the vanishing point there. So we have a very low eye level here. We've got a vanishing point to the left, to the right, and one above so that we can get those buildings tapering off into the distance. And that, unsurprisingly, is called three-point perspective. So again, just so that you can see that here, we've got eye level with a vanishing point and a vanishing point and a vanishing point. So if I want to draw something, I'm going to draw face of a building here. And then these would go off to the vanishing points that side. And the edge of that building would also go off to the vanishing point here. And say this was, we could, oh, sorry, that needs to be solid. That's a dotted line just so you can see it going to the vanishing point there. That was our vanishing point and we would end up three point perspective of this very strange sort of building that's actually going down to two streets in that case. That is three point perspective and that is two point there. But one thing I wanted to point out was about horizon lines. So usually we might have our picture and we put our horizon line somewhere. Don't ever stick your horizon line right across the middle. That's really to our eyes will be quite boring. Generally, we put it either a third from the top or a third from the bottom. Those are two good places for horizon lines. Here, the horizon or the, the eye level line is very sort of right across the middle ignore this person, they are a lot taller than the person taking the, the photo. So their eye level is up here, as you can see from the glasses, but whoever's taking the photo over their shoulder, their eye level line is here. And we have everything 
square onto us, but we could have a really low eye level line. This is the view of a worm if it was squidging its way around New York City or wherever. And so a worm's eye view brings in these amazing sort of very defined perspectives, really zooms in. So you could go for a worm eye view equally well. You could go in for a very high perspective and go for a bird's eye view. So you can change that eye level to make and communicate what you want in your picture. A bird's eye view might bring the feeling of freedom and slightly disassociated from what's going on. That worm eyes view might bring in the feeling of threat and it's towering over you, or maybe awe in that you're looking up and it's amazing. So your eye level view is really important for what you're communicating in your art. So once you understand perspective, you can start to play with it. You don't have to um, use perspective in your painting. So this is a piece by a friend of mine called Julie Adlard, and she does amazing work with clay pieces that are then painted onto, onto a canvas. And she flattens all the perspective and simplifies it. And that brings a real naivety, but a very charming naivety to, to her work. She knows what perspective is for sure, but she has decided to distort it. And that says something about simplicity and gives a charm to the piece. Often when I'm sketching, this is our local church, I like to distort perspective. So I have eased the, the, the vertical lines outwards deliberately. I mean, the, the uh, what are these called? Headstones are probably leaning to be sure, but the, the war memorial definitely wasn't. And these bits of the, the church aren't leaning out like that. But I have deliberately slightly distorted perspective to give a certain energy to the piece. And ditto on our local pub. The chimneys are not this wonky. I've just slightly distorted the perspective outwards to give life and energy to that building. But you can see that the perspective here on the roof and where it goes up here, that does go off to a vanishing point here. And we've got another vanishing point to the left. So this is two point perspective with a slight distortion. So once you understand perspective, you can make it do what you like. Hope you found that useful and that perspective no longer terrifies you. But it was a lot to take in. So if you want to read through that information again, I have done a blog post, which is at lizintheshed.wordpress.com. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified about the next video. And I should see you next week. Bye.